bye week. Uh, prior to that, Montana beat Idaho on the road and now returns home to face Northern Colorado uh, this coming weekend. Uh, we've got Alex Gubner with us and A.J. Forbes. Um, and, Coach, we'll, uh, we'll start with your, your final thoughts two weeks ago on the game in Idaho and, and uh, uh, how the Grizzlies used the bye week to prepare for this week. Thanks, Tabes. The win at Idaho was a, was a good win. They all, they're all good wins. So, um, Coming off our open date, uh, we're in good position. We're 6-1. and one. We're ranked number five in the national poll. So we're, we're in good position where we sit right now. And, and uh, obviously, that makes it a, a big week around here. We haven't had a home game in, since September. So we'll be excited to be back out there and play this Saturday. Questions? Bobby, I know Northern Colorado hasn't won a game, but they've played all their <laughs> conference opponents really close. So how have they gone about being competitive in those four games? Well, winning win is hard. I mean, everybody's trying. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned, they're far better than their record. Um, they play really hard. They, they uh, you know, they do things right. They just have uh, not quite gotten over the hump. And, you know, we don't look at the scores. We look at the film. And when you watch the film, uh, this is a good football team. And for specifics, offense, defense, special teams, what stands out on the film about what they do? Um, well, I think just uh, they're very sound in their scheme. And they play with great effort. Uh, I think that lends itself probably to the, the coaching they're getting. Uh, I think that. Uh, Coach Lamb does a great job running the program, and 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 uh, he has them going, and there there's no let up in that group. And then there's a new rule or waiver this year for with the redshirt rule, where in addition to the four games or the playoff games don't count against the four games now. Um, so I was curious your thoughts on that, and um, then maybe how you guys might plan to take advantage of that. Well, it's a good rule, um, if that's what you're asking. I mean, I think it's sound thinking, whether it's postseason bowl games or conference championships or whatever. Uh, is there something else you want there? If, if that's something you guys plan well, we to have, take advantage of now that it's in place. We, well, we've got a long way till playoffs start. So I don't know how that applies right now. I mean, the the – Ability for, I mean, I assume you're talking about freshmen or guys that haven't redshirted. Um, you know, the, the rule that they would be able to participate in up to four games in any given season has been in place for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but now they, before that, the playoff games used to count against the four, but now they don't, so true right um, and then for aj and uh governor just um what coach mentioned you guys are six and one ranked in the top 10 in the country just kind of how would you describe the vibe around the team in the locker room heading into the coming back from the yeah i mean it, it's cool to to know that you're one of the top ranked teams in the country i don't know how much attention that we we pay to that uh at, at the University of Montana, we're lucky enough to be in the national spotlight quite often. So I don't want to say we're, we're used to it, but we're, we're comfortable where we're, we're, we have attention on us. And so I don't know if we pay much attention to it, but it's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, what uh, AJ said, same thing. I mean, we're the Montana Grizzlies, and we expect to win every week. You know, that's our goal. And, you know, our last game was two weeks ago, and we're focused on Northern Colorado, just playing one week at a time. For both the players and Alex, we can start with you. Just you guys, three wins in a row after the loss to NAU. Just what would you say is the biggest catalyst behind you guys bouncing back from that and getting the back-to-back -back road ranked wins? Just what was the biggest turnaround for you guys that you were able to get back on track? Just uh, like what I said earlier, just understanding that this is a week-to-week -week deal and you got to take the bad from what happened, you know, that first loss. We correct, made a lot of corrections and just focusing on this one week is everything for us. You know, we're not looking in the future, 
down the road, a game in a month, anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think everything is – I could speak for the offense at least. I think everything is really starting to click right now. Um, I think we're, we're diving into – what we want our identity to be, and uh, I think that's been a catalyst for for what we've been doing so far. Then, AJ, what can you say just about Cliff's performance since he's taken the reins the last few weeks? Just you know, blocking for him, working with him. Just why has he been able to be so successful, and what's it like, you know, being the center for him? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm super proud of of Cliff and what he's been able to do since since he's he's taken the the starting job. Um, he obviously adds uh, a, a dynamic element with his running ability, but uh, he's, he's improved week over week as a passer, and uh, watching him carry the ball, he's a guy that you want to block for, and uh, I think everybody's loving loving him as the as the quarterback, and go forward with that. AJ, we'll start with you. Uh, what do you think of the kind of the timing of the the bye week, and what was maybe the, the most fun or coolest thing you did during the break? Yeah, the, well, the. Unfortunately, I had a weekend class this bye week, <laughs> so I didn't I didn't do a whole lot during the bye week besides uh, sit in a lecture. But uh, no, I thought that bye week was was well timed. I think this is the latest bye week we've had since I've been here, so it's nice to it's nice to just be able to relax for a little bit and catch our breath and start prepping for moving Colorado. What about you? Uh, slept, slept a lot. <laughs> Watch football. It was nice, you know. Got to watch a lot of college football games, and you know we're always playing or doing something on Saturday. So it was nice to kick back and you know recover. What was it like, kind of having the the later bye week? Um, I think it's good. I mean, we've had a lot of early bye weeks. I believe it's been I've been playing for a while, but I you know it's nice to have it kind of right in the middle, I guess. Uh, but I mean, we were still getting after it, still working. I mean, it, it technically was a bye week, but we didn't stop working. It's kind of a you know obviously a long break in between home games. You know what what is that like, and how excited are you to get back inside Washington Grizzly Stadium? Um, pumped. This is the best stadium in the country, and uh, you know we we love going on the road together. It's just us versus everybody, and we love coming back here. You know, having the best fans. You know, hollering and it's shaking in there and. Yeah, can't wait. AJ, obviously, you guys have played a lot of football and been around for a while. What's the message maybe to like some of the younger guys when they see like, oh yeah, here comes an 0-7 team? Like you guys know you've been around a long time. What's maybe a message to them not to take them lightly and to be focused? Yeah, I mean, kind of speaking on the sentiments that that Coach Hauk has said over the years, it's we're we're playing to our standard. We're not looking at the record of the opponent, we're looking at the film and we're trying to play to our standard. And I think that's probably the, the biggest thing. It's, it doesn't matter if, if if you win big on a team and you look at the film and you didn't do your job or execute what you wanted to do on a particular play. So playing to our standard is, is the biggest thing when it comes to that. And Alex, for you, weather's going to be a lot colder this week, kind of you know, the first kind of cold weather game. What's that like for you when the, the weather starts turning and, you know, I don't know that Colorado gets you know kind of cold there, but you're going to get some some warmer weather teams as the season goes uh, and the weather gets colder. So like, what's what's that like for you? I love it. I love it when it's cold out. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's better than uh, 98 degrees on Dorn Blazer. <laughs> I'd say. I think. Uh, yeah, I think I do better. You know, in the cold, not sweating a lot. You know, uh, I definitely like the cold weather. So. <laughs> Bobby, just do you have any crossover with Ed Lamb from the past at all? Have you anything come to mind we at all? We never worked together, but I've, I've known Ed for a long time. I mean, I shoot. I think he worked. I think I, you guys can ask him this. I think he was on Idaho's staff in like 2003 when Tom Cable was the head coach and they came here. So, seen yeah. him here and there. Sure. And he had a lot of success at Southern Utah in his previous stop in the Big Sky and helped turn that program around. You notice anything, I guess, with these Northern Colorado teams, or does he just seem like a guy who seems to be able to find success, even though it might take some time and they're not quite getting the wins this year? Well, as I mentioned, I've known Coach for quite a while and, and have high regard for his abilities as a football coach. And, and uh, like I said, I we turn on the film. These these guys do a good job. They they, uh, they play hard. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, 
Ed's a good football coach, and he'll have his team ready for Saturday, I promise. You've touched on this earlier in the year, but when you play a team you didn't see a year ago, like what's that prep like? Is it a little bit different, especially when it's a new coaching staff, new new dynamics, all that stuff? Um, well, it's, it's, it's the same thing we've talked about a little bit here and there, where the personnel has changed dramatically, so you don't have a gauge on the personnel. And then obviously when the staff changes, uh, you know, it's a completely different prep because they're doing different things. I a similar question for the players. AJ, we can start with you. Just what's it like prepping for a team like Northern Colorado who you've seen in the past, but just not for a couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I guess personnel-wise, it's easier to prepare for a team that uh, or prepare for players that you've gone up against in the past. You can uh, kind of uh, take away information that you've, you know, those playing experiences that you've had. But uh, you know, I'm looking forward to diving into the film this week and getting a good gauge on what these guys do. Yeah, um, I personally, for me, watching film, I think it's very rare to see teams that have the same personnel and same play style every year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even the teams we have played, like we played last year, um, I still look at it like a new season, obviously. Um, yeah, because last year was last year, so. Uh, for Bobby and AJ, uh, Eli Gilbin, named to the uh, Jerry Rice watch list. So, uh, Coach, what do you think has helped him get opportunities this year to produce like he has? Well, he's gotten opportunities because he's a good player and he's playing well. I mean, that's kind of how that works. But um, he's, he's uh, been very productive. Um, his yards per carry are, are uh, outstanding. Obviously, it has something to do with the guys up front as well. But uh, Eli's a talented kid, and it's nice to see him get recognized in, in terms of that watch list. And, AJ, what have you thought of just a, a freshman that's been so productive for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of going off of what I was saying with with uh, Clifton earlier, it's when you see a guy that, that runs as hard as he does, you know, he he's not afraid of contact. He doesn't run out of bounds. He, he looks for the extra yard. And having a guy like that uh, running behind you, it makes you want to block for him a little bit harder. So I'm uh, super thankful for what he's been able to do since he's since he's gotten here. And it's, it's cool to see him produce the way I, I feel like he, he probably want. He probably saw himself produce. And Alex, you guys had such a great pass rush against Idaho, like six sacks. How do you translate that forward? How do you sort of carry that momentum into this week? Um, I mean, just same thing we've always been doing, just getting after it in practice, really working on our pass rush. And uh, we got a lot of good guys that, you know, fly around and want to make plays and our assignment sound. So just keep doing the same thing every week. And Bobby, what would you, how would you just evaluate the way uh, both your fronts are playing right now? I think we've made improvements. I think we're playing better. I mean, obviously, the guys that are here with me today have played well throughout consistently. Um, but, you know, the reason why Idaho couldn't run the ball, and I don't know, that kid, I think that kid was the leading rusher in the big sky, was, was Alex was dominant. You know, his position didn't show up on the stat sheet all the time. But he was dominant in that game and shutting down the run game. They just, because of him and then the, the swarm around him, they, they couldn't run the ball. Anybody else? Bobby, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Jacob Sermon, Northern Colorado's quarterback. What's your just evaluation of him? Um, you know, I think he, he's an uh, accurate passer. I think he's got. Uh, um, Pretty good arm strength. Um, I'll be anxious to watch a little more and see uh, um, see how we're gonna, you know, defend him. Uh, the Weber State game, he was uh, really on it. He hit some great passes down the field. Um, that was impressive. Anyone else? Thanks, guys.